Well, Casey here with CL Creative, where I teach you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today, we are going to see how to launch a website in Webflow. I'm going to walk you through the steps that I personally take in order to launch a client site. And we're actually going to launch a client site together. So join me as we walk through these steps and I teach you how to launch your very first website in Webflow. And so one of the things that, that I like to do um, you know, is make sure that I have pretty much fulfilled everything down here in this audits panel. And so as you see here, I click on and, and you know, I purposely didn't do this because I was trying to build this site pretty fast. And a lot of times I do just say this for the end to make sure that I'm utilizing the images that I have for the site. But if you notice, I'm, I'm missing alt text for 21 images. Uh, I have all of my links are descriptive, my heading levels are not skipped, I don't have any duplicate IDs, but I do need to clean up this. So oftentimes you can see all the ones that I have here. I'll just click on this panel, click the right uh, arrow button here, and ask it to find it for me. And then here, I can go ahead and type in all of the alt text. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bore you, but that is the first step that I do, and I go through each page. I'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, I've gone through the audit panel and I've provided alt text for every one of the images that are showing up here on the home page. Um, and so I'm going to move to the next page. So that was the home page. Let's move over here to the contact us page and let's see if I have anything on this page to do. Nothing that is missing alt text on this page. So that's great. I'll move over to the services page and let's see if I have anything. Oh, I got the red here. So I've got several images here that I need to put all text on as well as I need to review these skipped headings. So here I've used like a subheading and this is in, in H3. Um, in this case, I'll probably go ahead and maybe change this to an H2, so it's H2, H2. And then I'll go and look here, and indeed, I do have another one. Still have questions, this is an H4, so let me just go ahead and change that to an H2 as well. Uh, maybe I'll change it to an H3 because it's inside of my facts, and this is an H2. So sometimes on these, like this one right here, I have listed as an H3. Sometimes on these, I will list them out as um, you know, something less than this, saying this is the main heading of this particular section. But uh, in this case, I, I may go just go through and make all of these since I do have them listed as H2. So that way I'm not getting people confused if they're going through the site and they're seeing an H3 first. And then they're going to see an H2 so I will make sure to do all of that on each one of these. That way, when you look at the site, I'm going to have H2, H2, H2. Uh, here's another H3. H2. And again, this is not changing the heading size. And that's because I've applied a heading style over here in my style selector, a style of H6. Um, you can name this whatever you want, but this is just how I have mine set up, H1 to H6 as far as styles go. But again, that is not reflective of what is here. This is actually gonna be in H2. So if I wanted to, I could change this to an H3 just to maybe better reflect what this particular section is about. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to leave it as an H2. If I get some sort of kickback from SimRush or something like that, then I will change that. But for now, this is where I'm going to leave it at. All right. I'm going to go through the audit panel and I'm going to update all of these images and I'll be back with you. All right. I'm back. I've gone through the audit panel again and everything is looking good on the services page. I have one last page to look at, the About Lone Star page, and indeed I do have just a couple of images here 
that I need to update there. Um, again, I have this text here, so let me go ahead and change this to H3 instead of an H4. All right, so everything looks good on that page. That's all the pages that I have have done, have set up. We're, we're good to go. Um, the next thing that I will do is I will go over here to the site settings. I've got my favicons already uploaded. Whoops, I like to go ahead and do that first. The next thing you want to make sure you do is that you get the uh, time zone set up right. And then you want to make sure that you set in the language code, which is going to be English. Uh, we want to remove the Webflow branding as well. Perfect there. Um, we've already got a plan established on this site, so we're good to go there. Uh, as far as SEO goes, we will disable the sub-indexing as soon as we launch the website. And we will do some of this other things as soon as we launch the website. Um, and I'll add this in. So I'll come back to this panel after I actually launch things. Make sure that our fonts are looking good. They're looking good. So this is just kind of like a last minute check over of the site. We don't really have any integrations in this particular site. But I may add in Google Analytics if this is what my client would like. Uh, the only other thing that I need to make sure to do is put in the correct email for all of the form submissions. So I will do that as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and come over here to publishing. And the, what I need to make sure that I do is minify all of my CSS and my JavaScript. So I'll see the changes for that. And I'm going to go ahead and add in the custom domain. So... I'll add in the custom domain here, and this is going to take me on a route over to Google, which is where the domain is being hosted. So I'm going to go ahead and add all of that stuff in, and I will be back, and then we'll work on some of the SEO features for the site. And just to pop back in real quick while I have this set up here, just want you to see that the subdomain indexing has been disabled automatically. And so they go ahead and do that for you, so there's really no need for you to mess with any of that stuff until after you have launched the website. All right, well, I've gone ahead and set this up. Uh, one of the things that is, is helpful uh, in knowing is whenever you add in your A records, which would be right in this section right here, they're going to give those to you. You, you want to add those to the same record so that they're not you know duplicate duplicate data. And uh, what I mean by that is that right here you have your A record and the data is in the same section. So if I manage that, you notice that it's right here like that. That's a helpful tip. I've added in two A records before in the past, which has really messed me up. So hopefully that saves you some headache. But I've got everything connected up. I've also made the www the default um, as well. So we want to make sure that we do that. And now I can publish this site. I'm going to click on this one right here. Publish to selected domains. And let's see what happens. Give it just a second here. Boom. We are live. So great. Our website is live. It's ready to go. My client is now open for business. There's a few other things that we need to do. So let me pause this and get set up for that. All right, back here. And now we need to work on this SEO page. The first thing we want to do is for indexing, we have disabled the Webflow sub subdomain indexing, which we've already seen has happened. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to put in this robot text file, user agent disallow. This is basically allowing, you know, anyone to access this site. Uh, all right. So we have that. We want to make sure that we auto-generate a site map. We've got that. And we want to make sure that we generate the global canonical tag role. So here you see HTTP dot, you know, is that colon um, forward slash forward slash. So we want to make sure that we include that along with the www. So it's going to match whatever our root domain over here on the publishing page is 
I can just go right here and essentially just copy it. Whoops, click the button way too many times for us. Let me get back over here to the site settings and back over to the SEO page. And let me just paste that in. We want to make sure that you do not end with the slash. Uh, I'm glad that they've put this warning here. In the past, I have actually included the slash and it's messed some things up. So glad th good thing that they have this warning here for you. So you can just remove that. Essentially, all I did was go to the page that had been launched, the home page, and I just copied the URL and pasted it right here. Makes it super easy to do. So we can save the changes there. All right. Um, the other thing that we might want to do and, and what I think is super helpful to do is to verify this with Google. You can click right here to the Google search console and then put this in there. So let me pop over there and do that. All right, we're back here in Google search console. I just essentially clicked on that hyperlink and took me here and I'm adding a new property. And so I'm going to add this URL prefix property. I'm going to use this one on the right side here continue so it's verifying the property for me uh, one of the things that I'm gonna do is utilize this HTML tag right here so I'm gonna copy that all right so I've grabbed the H I can go back over here and verify it I'm gonna go back over here I'm going to verify my site and ownership has been verified that is indeed the easiest way to do that so i've got that property i got a bunch of properties in here uh let's find that property where am i at here it is lone star roofing so i've got the property here the next thing that i want to do is i need to put in my site map so if we go to the website to the Google domain here and we'll type in sitemap.xml this is going to give me my sitemap I can copy that URL I'm just checking it here and copy that URL go back over here paste that in and delete that front part there or you could just type in sitemap.xml sometimes I like to make sure that everything is set up and it's going to show up so then I'm going to submit that sitemap to Google. Sitemap has been submitted successfully and we are good. So now we'll just wait for Google to crawl the page. And once Google crawls the page, we should be, or crawls the site, we should be good. Only other thing I need to do is add in my client's email for the form and everything should be good to go for this particular website. So I'll do that here in just a moment. And if I go over here to these pages, you can notice that uh, one of the things that you definitely want to make sure that you do is add in the title tag as well as the meta description and paste in your open graph URL. I've uploaded this image right here for the open graph. And so you just click on, hover over it, click on the gear icon, click on this copy clipboard to asset link copy that and then you can go to each of your pages and just paste that link in right here easy way to go ahead and set up your open graphs so I've done that for every page on the website I've created some nice copy here that will hopefully entice people to click on it when it shows up after Google has indexed that so the last thing I'll do is just add in the email address for the form submissions which I will get off of our contact us page and we should be we should be good to go for launching this website in Webflow hopefully that helps you out as you think about launching your next Webflow website if you have any questions um, please feel free to reach out